so on an empty road, is it illegal to run a, a red traffic? Hi, I'm Kevin. Hi, I'm Peng Chu. So in today's episode, we have Peng Chu here, who is a Cambridge University graduate, to talk about his experience reading law there. So as an introduction, could you tell us why did you wanted to do law in the first place? Right. Um, I like I I aspire to become a lawyer. That's one. Um, the second thing is I would like to study a subject right, which is uh, more versatile and has it encompasses a lot of different aspects of life. Mm -hmm. So for example, there's a private aspect like a contract mm -hmm. or commercial or the commercial aspect or the public aspect as well. And law is somewhat um, related to uh, politics, which I find is quite interesting. Like you said, you wanted to be a lawyer. What, what inspired to you to be a lawyer in the first place? What inspired me to be a lawyer? Like, um, I think I, I like, I enjoy doing arguments, mm -hmm. right? I, I want to be an advocate. I want to be an advocate, and I like to see both sides of the argument. Mm -hmm. So that I think that kind of inspired me like, to be to do a job which requires that skills. How did you go about pursuing your passion to read law? Oh, so I'm a, I'm a science student, uh -huh. right? When I do SBM, I did all sciences. I did not take any writing subject, right? In A levels, I also did all. I did physics, chemistry, math, and economics. So <laughs> economics is I, I think you know as well. Economics is the only is the only more writing subject. It's the only writing subject, but it's not a pure writing subject mm. like history or English literature. Mm. So there's a, I think there's a myth going on that you know, science students, it's harder for science students to be a good law student because we do not write, right? We are not trained to write like the artsy students. So um, I think I'm here, I would like to take the opportunity to debunk the myth as well. Uh -huh. uh, because science students, we are trained to analyze uh, problems better and in a huge part of the law degree really involves problem solving. Yeah, I understand. I've been told before that like, sciences is the same as law. You you have your concepts, you have principles. Yeah. Right? And in the end, you just imply that the same as how you do it in science and law, right? Uh, there, there, there are similarities. La. There are similarities. And what I can say is, I think, you know Lord Dan, Lord Dan, mm -hmm. he studied mathematics as a degree in Oxford. Oh. Yeah, so he's not a pure law student. He only did a one year of GDR, a conversion, to become a law. Oh. And how did you specifically end up ended up in Cambridge University then? Well, uh, so I was pretty fortunate to have done my A levels in College of Java. Uh, my my grades weren't bad, right? My grades weren't bad there, so the the teacher sort of encouraged me to uh, to pursue for the best. Mm -hmm. um, Cambridge University is one of the best. Cambridge and Oxford is one of the best for to study law in the UK, right? So they encouraged me to apply, and I, I just went on from there, a step leads to another step. Mm. Yeah. And could you like give a brief overview of how the process went? Oh, uh, so Oxbridge involved a more, I think more, ap the application process is more tedious. Uh, right? You have to, uh, I think you are aware that the UK universities require UCAS. Mm -hmm. So besides the UCAS, Oxbridge also require, Cambridge requires a requires us applicants to fill up an additional application form. Uh, then we have the interview and some admission test. Uh. Mm. It's called a Cambridge Law Test, uh -huh. which is pretty tough, I would say. It's very tough. Yeah. But with preparation, it's definitely possible to accept. Cambridge U itself, they have their own law test, right? Like other schools, yeah. they have the LNET. The LNET, yes. LNET, but then Cambridge Law, they have their own exam. Yes. How was the exam then? Okay, so the exam, right? Uh -huh. For me, um, I was okay. So for me, I I had during my time I had the essay type of questions and the comprehension type of questions. So the essay type of question, I I still remember the first question. I have three questions to choose that right. I, I just need to write one. So the first question they asked me something like, um, in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. um, so on an empty road, is it illegal to run a, a red traffic? The traffic light is red, right? Uh -huh. So is it? illegal to run away. So right I say okay. I was like, wow, <laughs> this is a this is something which is out of my mind completely. But I didn't choose that question obviously I had nothing to write about. 
So I wrote the second question, which is more related to economics. Mm -hmm. um, and fortunately, I studied economics in A-level, so I was saying to write, at least write something about it. Uh, comprehension was pretty hard, so they give you an uh, excerpt of judgments, mm -hmm. the ju ju uh, an actual judgment. And at that time, we, we only studied A-levels, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't, you know, we haven't actually read any judgment. So it's, you just write whatever you know. Uh. Yeah, that's it. Oh. And how about the you? Do you find it? How do you? Oh, uh, interview. I was interviewed in Malaysia uh -huh. um, by uh, I think quite a renowned economics professor. Um, the interview went really well. Uh, he just asked me some questions on my personal statements and what are my opinions on the current events. Oh. Yeah. As you already said, Cambridge U is one of the top universities in the UK. Yeah. So how was the course structured like? Okay. Um, so the structure of the course, it, it, the duration is three years. Mm -hmm. In your first year, you are required to take all the mandatory subjects, um, which are the uh, criminal, the law, the tort law, um, Roman law, Roman law, Roman law, which is which only Oxford and Cambridge make it mandatory. Because um, it is just for general knowledge sake, right? Uh, English law actually originated from Roman law. Something like the Justinian and all that. Yeah, the Justinian, thanks for reminding me by the way. So it's the Justinian concepts and uh, it's kind of like edicts, uh, edicts. Um, it's the edicts. That's the only law subject in which no case law is required. Oh, yeah. Because it's civil law, isn't it? Like it's Justinian civil law. Or? Yeah, it's civil law. So it's like Justinian, which paragraph, which paragraph says what, what, what. But aside from that, we also do constitutional law. Oh. In your opinion, uh, like have you having experienced that, what's what would the how do I say? Because it's Cambridge U. How would the quality of the lecturers and the study materials? The well, <laughs> the library is fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Cambridge is made up of thirty different around thirty colleges, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, the law fact has its own library, which is which is huge. Uh, Cambridge itself has its own library, which is amazing. And different thirty different colleges have their own libraries. Oh. Yeah. So I would say that study material is fantastic in Cambridge. The lecturers obviously they are you know they are the the experts in those subject mm -hmm. areas. So they know their stuff Obviously they know their stuff. Um. I think that these lecturers they because uh one thing one special aspect uh, of Oxford and Cambridge, which I would like to highlight here, uh, to actually um, encourage people like you guys right, to give it a try. Because one special aspect is that um, you in your Cambridge is called supervision, uh, other universities they call it the tutorial. Right? Um, in a supervision, you have one supervisor only supervises two students. Per session. Oh. So the ratio of teacher students is actually very low. Mm -hmm. And I think that gives you a very good uh, understanding of the subject because you are you can you can always ask the, your supervisor about the stuff which you don't understand. As compared to you know other universities in which in one tutorial you have 10 to 15 students, right? Worse still, some of them have 20 to 30 students, mm. which is actually a class and not a supervision, right? Mm. Um, I think that's one special aspect. Uh. Mm. Speaking from that, how many people how many individuals were in your cohort then? Uh, around 200. 200. 200. 200 or 220, about that. Because some of some of the people leave after the first year. Oh. Yeah. Well, going on that, that's like... How do, it's quite impressive about how the lecturers do that in supervision because you said there's like two each time, right? Yes. Um, how they do it is because we... Cambridge is very college-centric. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I was from Fitz Middle College. Mm -hmm. uh, your supervision, who are your supervisors, how are your supervision scheduled, right? Mm -hmm. uh, those are actually arranged by my director of studies, mm -hmm. who is in my college. Oh. Right? So let's say in my college in a year, we have around 7 to 10 law students. Mm -hmm. right? The director of studies are solely responsible for the 7 to 10. Oh. So they can, he can arrange it. Uh, he can arrange it. Those are the I think the resources in which Oxbridge have. Uh. Oh. One good thing is that you are you can be you can really understand the course. One bad thing is that if you if you are lazy right and you don't do your work, everybody knows it. Oh. 